This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Rogue River Valley. But before that, this video is brought to you by Jayhawk226 and Chad Bergman. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Rogue River Valley map can be found over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you a little bit of the description. Welcome to Rogue River Valley. This map offers the following. Two new crops in alfalfa and black bean, American flag bale wrap, soybean straw, compost, coal, gravel, and many more new fill types. New soybean, corn, sugar beet, and potato textures. 11 small to medium fields. Custom animal pens. Train with cell points at the sawmill and carpentry. A fairgrounds for fun with non-farming stuff. And a couple of off-road trails. This map is set in Oregon and as such has Oregon license plates. Has several cell points and productions. Tree weights have been lowered to make for a better yarding experience. And much, much more. So you choose, do you want to have a small farm or a logging empire? The map offers both. Let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to use the mod, so we typically use when take a look at maps as additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. Let's go ahead and pull the log up. And while the map loads on in, into new farmer mode, by the way, I will tell you that if you load this map up in a farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main starting farm completely empty of buildings and machinery. In addition, you do not own any land in those alternate play modes. But as I said, we are loading this map up in new farmer mode. Now, when you load into the map for the very first time, you do not start at the main farm. You start up here actually at a clifftop gazebo and take a look. This map does have collectibles. It has the 20 Hulk Feather Rune collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now this map is predominantly a forestry map. In fact, I would say four fifths of the map is designed for forestry. And that is what you see right here. Now this map does have all the standard crop types of Eltos in a Farm Sim 22, in addition to alfalfa and black bean, as the description said. Take a look at our lands area. You'll see we start off by owning Farmland ID 46, which is the main farm area. It is 41.87 acres all by itself, and it can be bought for $440,000 if you do not own it already. Then we have Farmland ID 35, which is 15.93 acres in size, and it's purchasable for $167,000. Then as far as other items, you can see we have a fair bit of viable forestry all over the place. Now we can buy portions of the river. This would be Farm ID 19, and we have Farm ID 59. Farm ID 57 includes portions of the river, as well as Farm ID number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, which they are, and then ultimately how much is that farmland going to cost us if we want to buy it. And then after we take a look at this list, we will take a look at the field calculator screen, which is going to show us the field sizes and then we can compare that to the farm land ID screen here in order to figure out which field is on which farm land ID, and then ultimately how much it's gonna cost us to buy that field. You see, most of these fields are just under one hectare in size. We've got eight, nine, and 10 at 1.33 hectares basically, and then big field 11 at 6.6. .6. And that is all the farming fields that are predefined, but you do have a good chunk of land here with respect to farm ID 46 that you could do something with. We do have a somewhat custom crop counter available to us on this particular map. Overall looks fairly standard at this point, but again, we do have alfalfa and black bean available. 
Taking a look at our prices screen, we do have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we have the ability to sell our animal outputs in eggs, wool, and milk. We also have the ability to sell silage, hay straw, and grass. Now, with respect to the production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game production items as well, which is always good to see. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat though, when we get down here to the custom production that is built into the map. So we do have buy points for lime, and we also have multiple places to sell our stones. Now, this map has custom compost, soybean straw, alfalfa, alfalfa hay, black beans, asphalt, tires, coal, dirt, gravel, sand, clay. Then we have iron ore from the platinum expansion. We have crude oil. We have stream pay. We have kerosene. We have tar. We have gold, gold bars. Then we have metal, again, from the platinum expansion. We have empty pallets. But notice there is no way to sell those empty pallets other than probably set the production item to auto sell because there are no selling stations listed. In addition, we have the paper from the platinum expansion. And once again, there is no place to sell your paper other than to just have it auto sell at the production point. We also have asphalt pallets. There's no way of dealing with those at the moment. We have river sand P for, I guess, river sand pay. We have wood beams. Then we have planks. Then we have dry boards. Dry boards two, dry boards three. Then we get into the standard platinum expansion production items. And we do not have the ability to sell the standard platinum expansion items. Now, of course, you could put down, at least for paper, you could put down the platinum expansion sell point in order to get rid of that paper, should you so wish. Now, if you are playing with pumps and hoses enabled, you do have the ability to sell your separated manure. Taking a look at our vehicle overview, you will see that we do start out with a decent list of starting equipment. All of it is owned, none of it is leased, and it all has very low operating hours and good maintenance. We have several animal pins here at the main farm, although we do not have any animals available. We also have contracts available on the map, and we do not own any production chains at the start. As we've already mentioned, we do have the 20 game cartridge collectibles from Bolt Baleroon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our precision farming soil map for these 11 fields. Now it does say that we have a custom soil map on the map. Taking a look here, you can see we have six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, all in silty clay. Field 11 is a bit of loam, sandy loam, and a little, little smidge of loamy sand. Meanwhile, fields one, two, and three are predominantly loamy sand. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Fint Fabert 515C small tractor. Then we have the Valtro Valmet 8750 medium, the John Deere 4755, the John Deere 7810, and the Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractors. We've got the Mac Superliner 6x4. We also have the Topliner 4090H harvester that is paired up with the 4090H grain header as typically, and then we have a 4090H header trailer as well. We've got the John Deere side-by-side, -side, as well as the 1986 Lizard pickup truck. We've got the Load King Distinction Super B trailer for the semi, as well as a pair of Welger DK-115 trailers. We also have the eight-row Capello corn header for our Dutzfar our harvester. We have the BTC-50H disc harrow. We have the Nordstein HK25 NS 3030 Power Harrow and Cedar Combo. We have the Maxima 3-Till Planter. We also have the Hardy Mega 1200L Fertilizer and Herbicide Sprayer. We have the K105 Lime and Solid Fertilizer Spreader. We also have the GMD 4411 Side Mower. The GF8712 Tedder, as well as the GA4731 Wind Rower. We've got the Zevon CFS2501 DO Forage Wagon. We have the VB3190 Round Baler. We have the Josquin Osquatran 7300S Water Trailer. 
we have a Noah TTW 140 animal trailer. We also then have the John Deere 643R front loader arms and then a Q6M and a Q5M front loader arms. And for that front loader, we have pallet forks, universal buckets, and round bale forks. We also have a single 650 kilogram front weight. And we have the Bachman MHAL 4320 slash 35 flatbed trailer. Now, with respect to mods and DLCs, you will see that we do have some custom items that are part of this map. We have the CC66 no clippings, so you can use this to mow your grass and you will not get any output from the mower, but you will get mowed grass. We have a Komatsu 931XC edit. Now, I believe this has been modified to work with much, much larger diameter trees. There may be other things modified here, but I believe it's just got larger diameter cutting head on it. We have an edit of the Komatsu 875 transport vehicle. We have then a bucket for the wheel loader that has been set up with an unrealistic 25,000 liter capacity and will also hold all inputs. We have the edit to the Pinnacle Mac truck. We have the Distinction Super B edit that has been modified again with some unrealistic capacity options. We also have a side dump edit, which again, has some unrealistic capacity options available to you. We have the MKS-8, the RRV MKS-32. Those have all been set up to accept more inputs, including our crude oil, tar, kerosene, and methane. We also have a modified Joskin obstacle trans that has also been set up to hold all of the liquid inputs. We have the Penroth Raptor 300 that has been modified as well. Then we have the Superliner that has been modified, as well as the RRV Tornado 252 Snowblower. That is all part of the map. Now that we're down at our starting farm, let's go ahead and conduct our farm tour. We have our farmhouse here with our sleep trigger at the front. And then at the side, we have our wardrobe trigger. Around the back of the farmhouse, we have a chicken coop. Now, one thing that is not denoted with the chicken coop is the chicken buy point. 300 chickens in this two coop. We have our food trough. And then we have our egg spawn point. We've got several sheds uh, with respect to can the farm be customized. We do have the ability to sell all of the buildings that are on the starting farm. So if we want to go back to a completely from scratch type experience, even in new farmer mode, we can do that. Again, as I said, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the main starting farm here is completely void of buildings and machinery. We've got our water trailer conveniently placed here to let you know that there is a water trigger down here. We have our sheep pen. 300 sheep in this particular facility. Then we have our food trough and then our wool spawn point. Nice bale shed here. Here we have a cow barn. So we have our slurry point. Plus we have our food and straw triggers. Our milk trigger as well as our animal drop off point. 500 cows in this facility. Got a couple more sheds over that way, but really what I want to get to is I want to make my way across the pasture over here. And then we have all of this as open grass area. 
And way over here to the side of field 11, we have our pig area. So we have our slurry point. We have our food trigger. And then we have our animal drop off point. 300 pigs in this building. Then over here we have a feed production. And with that, let's go ahead and buy all of the production items that are on this map. In total, there are 13 different production points on the map. Now let's do a rundown of all of the production inputs and outputs. We start out with the Rogue River Sawmill. Sawmill is going to accept wood and coal. And with that wood and coal, we're going to be able to produce planks, wood chips, wood beams, and another form of planks. So we have wood, which is identified as boards one. I believe that is the planks from the base game. I believe. Maybe the planks from the Platinum expansion. I'm not really sure because we have a different icon there than what I'm expecting. But at any rate, 500 units of tree, 250 units of coal. So we make 250 units of boards, one, and 125 units of wood chips. Then we have wood beams. That's going to get 500 units of trees, 250 units of coal for 250 units of wood beams and 125 units of wood chips. Then the same 500 units of trees, 250 units of coal is going to make 250 units of planks and 125 units of wood chips. Then we have the drying station, which is going to accept our planks or boards one. It's going to accept our wood beams and it's going to accept our regular planks. And it's going to convert that to dry boards one, dry boards two, and dry boards three. Now, a little personal suggestion here is to take the input icon and take this little red drop of water, I guess, with some heat waves going out of it. Take that and add it to each icon. That's what we've basically done here. We've got our input icon. We have our output icon the same Then with the little red droplet. Now with wood beams, we have a completely different icon. And from first glance, it may be difficult to discern which one is which because they're very similar in shape. Then we have dry boards three. Once again, if it was the same and just had this little icon, I think that would be nice to see as opposed to, and again, just a smaller version of boards two, which is a smaller version of boards one. Then we have our empty pallet production. We're gonna take wood chips and we're gonna make empty pallets. We're gonna take wood beams and make empty pallets. We're gonna make planks and make empty pallets. And then empty pallets, or sorry, the other form of planks, and we're gonna make empty pallets again. But remember, right now we don't have a way of selling those empty pallets. So you real probably want to set this to auto selling. Crude oil, we have sand and river sand pay, and then that's gonna make crude oil. So we have sand, 100 units of sand, we'll make 75 units of crude oil, 100 units of river sand pay is gonna make 75 units of crude oil. We have a wash plant where we're gonna bring stream pay, methane and coal, and then we're gonna have the ability to make either river sand pay dirt, sand, or gold. So we have 100 units of stream pay and 75 units of methane. That is gonna make 50 units of river sand pay, 50 units of dirt, and 50 units of sand. Then for our gold, we're gonna have 75 units of stream pay, 50 units of coal. We're gonna get 75 units of gold. Our steel factory is gonna take coal and iron ore, and we're gonna make metal. Our asphalt production, is going to take 50 units of tar, 75 units of gravel, 25 units of sand, 125 units of methane, and we're gonna get asphalt pallets. But I believe asphalt pallets was also something that we cannot sell at various sell points. So again, we're gonna to have to set that to selling. We come down to our tar production. We're gonna bring old tires and kerosene. We're gonna make 100 units then of tar. We have Rogue River Furniture. We're just going to accept wood, planks, dry boards, one, two, and three. 
the other planks and wood beams. And we're going to get furniture and wood chips out of that. And depending on which input you pick, it's going to depend on how much output you're going to get from those 500 units of your input. With respect to the gold bar factory, we're going to take gold and coal and we're going to convert that into gold bars. We have our feed production where we're going to be able to take grass and make that into silage and compost. We have alfalfa silage. We're going to take alfalfa and once again, get silage and compost out of that. Our pig, or sorry, our cow food is going to be grass, black beans, and sunflowers. It's going to make 300 units of TMR and 200 units of compost. Then we have pig food, which is going to be corn, barley, soybeans, and potatoes. It's going to make 200 units of pig food and 100 units of compost. Then we wrap it all up with the paper plant. That's going to take wood chips as an input and output paper. But again, as of right now, you're going to need to set that to auto sell because there is no way of selling paper without putting your own sell point down. And with that, let's go ahead and do a little bit of our fly around tour. As we take to the sky, I'm going to tell you that the farming portion of the map is flat and the forestry portion of the map is nothing but flat. It is not anywhere as close to being flat. So here we have field 11. That is our starting field. To the right, we have six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then to the left, we have fields one, two, three, four, and five. We've got a little bit of a town here. Lots of cell points here. And here we have two different things. We have our sawmill and we have our drying factory. And they are basically literally right on top of each other, which does make these triggers a little bit confusing in my opinion, for players. I'm gonna do my best to run down where the various triggers and spawn points are for this area, but it is gonna get a little bit of a confusing and it is not very well marked. And that will ultimately come to bite the map score in the end. In addition to that, we have a train transfer silo located right there. We have a rent train trigger right there we were animal dealer which includes a cell point for the train we have the ma familia restaurant cell point over here we have our fuel station we have a cell point here at our gas station and then around the other side, here we have our animal, or not our animal, but our garage, our dealership. We've got a grocery store cell point. Make our way around the road. We have a cell point here at the logistics area. One of our custom productions in the Rogue River wash plant. Some more production going on here. Then we have another animal area. So I believe it's going to be another cow area. 200 cows in this building or facility. Pasture, I guess I should properly say. And then we have a horse pasture. 16 horses in here. Continuing on the western side of the map. Here we have our fairgrounds. And the fairgrounds has kind of a off-road 4x4 monster truck style course here. So you're going to go over some cars... You're gonna make a sharp corner here. You're gonna sprint up this lane. You're gonna come back. You're gonna go back over some crushed cars. And then here we've got a kind of a jump. Crushed cars up to some containers. 
Then we've got a container jump over some cars and then a container jump over the finish line. We've got another just kind of storage building here behind the fairgrounds. And then we move into the the deep dark forest. Now we're going to do the drive around portion because there are areas in here that we do need to get to. For example, down here we have some custom production. This is going to be the melting area. So that's where we're going to do making our gold bars. And then we have tucked away here our crude oil production. Let's make our way back over to the river. So let's re run down some of our scoring items while we're kind of flying around here. The map has 13 productions built in. So with respect to production being built into the map or areas set aside for such, we're going to give the map a full point there. Here we have a train cell point. Continue to run down the river. We're going to come to our carpentry which also includes a train cell point for logs. We'll continue doing our river run. And as we are doing our river run, with respect to the ability to sell all of our base game crops, production items, and animal outputs, we are also going to be giving the map a full point there as well. Now, I think, I feel like... I should probably rightfully take a little bit of points off because of the fact that we just do not have the ability to sell some of the custom productions that are here on the map. But that's not the scoring metric. Scoring is metric is all about the base game productions. So we're going to hold to that. I'm simply going to just make, make note, right, make you aware that there does appear to be some production items that are custom to the map that you will not be able to sell unless you do direct selling at the production facility or put your own sell point down with respect to things like paper. Here we have what I think is going to be pay dirt. We're down here in a river, so I think this is just going to be pay dirt to collect. And then way down here, we have a train fill point. And with that, let's come back over here and rent the train. And while we're waiting for the train to show up, let's do a rundown of the build mode. So hit our rent train. We're waiting for that to show up. Let's go ahead and go into our build mode. This map does include some custom sheds that we can put down. They're basically the same sheds that we have at our starting farm. So we have those listed here. We also have under silos, we have a bulk material silo. Looks like we can just dump items into. Then we have the train transfer silo, two million liters. Silo extensions, containers, we've got our buy point. Looks like we can buy wood chips from here, kerosene, coal, and I don't 
is that wood chip bales? Not really sure what the deal with that is. Okay, under tools, then we have our farmhouse production. We do have the ability to buy the custom production that is a part of this map. We have here the Rogue River biofuels. And I don't remember the biofuels being listed in the uh, production. So I will go and maybe buy that during the drive around portion. We have the steel factory that we can put down. We have the wash plant that we can put down. The crude oil production. The gold bar factory. Our feed production. And our paper plant. We do have the standard sell points. And then we could put down the silver run market if we're looking to offload something like the iron ore are the paper products same game base game greenhouses orchards and the generators we do have some custom animal pins that are available to put down base game decorative items and then under landscaping we do have fairly standard fs22 textures plants and trees So what I want to do here is I want to drive up to this train buy point. And I want to show you what you can buy from here. And then we are going to drive the train over to the train transfer silo that is over by the paper mill. And I'm going to show you basically what we can put into there so let's toggle back to the rear tanker which has been is a liquid style tanker and from here we can add herbicide water crude oil liquid fertilizer so let's go ahead and add crude oil to this now you'll see that I'm adding crude oil, but my money is not going down. I am basically getting free crude oil from this area. Let's back up to our hopper car. And in this car, we have the ability to load gravel, iron ore, sand, coal. So let's go ahead and add coal. And you see, once again, I am getting free coal from this point let's go back here and take a look let's take a look at our selling area for coal i could take this coal right now and sell it at the train sell point for 1128 dollars per thousand liters so i can just endlessly just have myself a money bank right here just load it for free sell it just back up the train and there you go same way with respect to our crude oil we have our train selling point four thousand five hundred fifty one dollars i could sell this if i wanted to but for the purpose of this video we are going to speed along around to the silo that we can unload the train into. And then we will pick it up with a drive around portion of the video. Now that we made it over here to the train silo. You'll see that we do have the ability to unload into that train silo with our coal. All right, that should be good enough. Now, what we don't have the ability to do, at least I don't think we do, is to unload our oil into this silo. That's okay because we can, with our custom tankers, empty our oil 
crude oil out of here into a tanker and then take it around to whatever productions are going to require it. Now let's talk about this facility before we go and do the regular drive around. So here we have the log cell trigger and wood cell trigger here for the sawmill. The sawmill is this entire facility. Here we have our interactive icon for the sawmill. Remember the sawmill is going to be able to produce planks, wood chips, wood beams, and planks again. So basically boards one, wood beams, planks, and wood chips, okay? So here's our input for our wood, our logs, our log cell trigger. Our pallets for the sawmill are gonna spawn right here at this door. There is no marker indicated that this is where those pallets are gonna spawn at, but this is where those pallets are gonna spawn at. We're just gonna completely skip this building for now and run all the way around to this side of the area. And here we have the output for our wood chips. Wood chips for the sawmill are gonna come out here. Remember our pallet spawn point, our interactive icon, and our log cell area is way, way on the other side of that building right there. That building that we're looking at, this is actually the dryer. So this is the drying station. Here we have our pallet spawn point for the drying station. We have our dump point for the drying station. Again, not marked, other than the floating explanation icon, which is not an actual trigger. Then we have our interactive icon for the drying station. Remember the drying station is gonna accept basically boards one, wood beams and planks. And it's gonna produce dry boards one, two and three. So this area is basically two productions in one. The int building over there is a sawmill. The building over there is a sawmill. This is the drying station in between both of those. So we got our plank spawn point for our sawmill. We have our plank spawn point on the other side of this building for our drying station. We have our log dump point for the sawmill over there, our interactive icon for the sawmill over there. And then we have our wood chip fill point over there for the sawmill. And then this building is right smack in the middle. I really wish that this was kind of moved off to the side and that way everything was kind of, our sawmills over here, our drying station is over here, but instead our sawmill is everywhere and then our drying station is right smack in the middle. So now that we're here at Rogue River Valley Equipment, our dealer, we have our dealer trigger actually is outside, right there. This is where we're gonna customize, sell, paint, repair our vehicles. Again, there's no markers indicating where that is gonna be located. Inside of here though, we then also have a workshop trigger. So we have two different triggers. We have the workshop trigger and then we have our dealership trigger on the outside. So that's a workshop trigger where we can customize and repair only, whereas our dealer trigger outside is where we're gonna be able to do more. Then we have our dealer icon inside of here. Got a fairly large area for our vehicles and such to spawn in at. And then right down the street from our dealer, we have a church cell point. Right there. Continuing down the road. 
We have our BGA. And we're going to need to buy the land in order to interact with this. $13,000. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap, my boy. Dirt cheap. So the BGA is going to accept grass, potatoes, silage, slurry, manure, sugar bee cut, canola, sunflowers, corn, wood chips, coal, and crude oil. And for that, we're going to be able to get methane, digestate, diesel, def, and kerosene as outputs. So I'm not going to go through and read you all of these various recipes because they're quite numerous. And they are quite varied with respect to what they will output. But I'll just go ahead and click through them here. We have our input hopper. We have our output right there. We have our bowling alley cell point. Everybody loves a good trip to the bowling alley. Do we not? Oh my, Mr. Chicken. You shouldn't be out here in the middle of the road. No, no, you shouldn't. Let's go up here because we've got a little bit of a mine to look at. So this is a fill area. We can get coal, clay, sand, asphalt, gravel, stones, dirt, tear dirt, iron ore from here. Oh, and we can also get a, yeah. Yeah, one of those. All right, 18 left. You're up to find the rest. way because at the fairgrounds we have a selling point right here And we'll just cut across the fairgrounds popular proper. We have one of our custom productions in our paper company. So we have our pallet spawn point, our dump point, and our interactive icon. Make your way up real quick. This is going to be the smelting area. This is where we're going to be making our gold bars. Rough roads. Rough roads through here. No doubt. Oh, well that. Nice little details through here. Nice details. Let's 
So we have our dump point, our interactive icon, and our pallet spawn point. And while we are making our way kind of back into civilization, we'll continue on with some of our scoring metrics. With respect to can the farm be customized, we've mentioned that you can indeed sell all of the buildings that are on the main farm. And therefore you do have the ability to customize fully the farm area. There is a rather large pond or lake, depending on what you want to call it, at the farm area. I even was able to landscape that area and basically raise the ground up above the water level. So if you wanted to completely eliminate the pond area, you could do that as well. custom sign. Welcome to Rogue River Valley. Got another train rental trigger over here to our left. We have a dump point. Cell point. Sorry, no, this is the, this is going to be the pallet factory. Yeah. So we are at dump point, our interactive icon, and our pallet spawn point. Remember, pallets are not used at all. For whatever reason, we don't use pallets in any of our productions. But we have the ability to make pallets, which is a little confusing. And as such, we have no way of selling pallets as well. So again, I would suggest setting that to auto sell. Here we have our tar production. Remember for tar production, we're gonna need tires and kerosene to produce our tar. Here we have our dump point for tires. And as of yet, I have absolutely no idea where we're gonna get tires from. Maybe we'll find it as we further our drive around the map. Here we have what looks like a way of selling our coal, not our coal, but our crude oil from the train. We have our wash plant. We have a pallet spawn point, interactive icon, and dump station on the side here. This is where we're gonna get river sand, sand, dirt as outputs from the wash plant. This is so when I make bad decisions, you don't suffer. Here we have our cell point for our logistics plant. That's the logistics company. Our grocery cell point. And then we have our fuel trigger. And we have a cell point here at the fuel station. We have our animal, or not our animal dealer, but a vehicle dealer right behind the fuel station. So that's where we all started this drive around. I thought for sure there would be somewhere where we could just come and buy used tires, like a uh, like a junkyard or something. Or we'd be able to buy them from the store, but no, we can't even do that. So here we have the Mafia Media cell point. And then inside of here, 
that's where we talked about our drying plant and our sawmill. We have our animal dealer, and then we have an animal dealer sell point. Then we have also the ability to sell off of the train here at the animal dealer. Now let's figure out how to get up into the mountains from here. I know there was an access road somewhere. How about here? Oh no, that's where we that's where we already were. With respect to buildings using the new texturing technique as well as ground textures, we're gonna give the map three quarters of a point. The custom buildings at the main farm, they are not as best as I can tell using the new texturing technique. Now all the other buildings on the map are using that new technique because they are basically FS22 buildings. But the farm buildings that we start out with in new farmer mode, they are not using the new texturing technique. Alright, I feel like we might be on the road to success at this point. As we mentioned across the street, here we have several ways of crossing the river. We have a train selling silo. Let's go ahead and pull up the mini map and I'll show you where we are. You see it says train sell point. Uh, maybe maybe if we drive around the the forest enough we'll find piles of piles of of tires just lying around for us to pick up but as far as hot spots on the map we only have one more hot spot to look at and that's the one we're driving to and this is not a, uh, as far as I remember, this is not a buy point. This is a production point way up in here. This is our crude oil facility. There's a fun little feature. We have a container that has been set up as a bridge. So if you all know where we're going to be able to find tires for this map, I would be interested to know down in the comments below. Yeah, here we have our crude oil plant. And then with respect to player and interactive areas being clearly marked, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point there. We do have a couple areas where I feel things are not as clear as they maybe should be or could be and as a result we are going to deduct a little bit of points there so that's going to give the map a total score of four and a half out of five overall it's a really interesting map you can do a little bit of farming and a whole lot of forestry kind of the best of both Right, a little bit of sampling of this, a little bit of sampling of that. We've got really, really cool, rough terrain here coming down here through the through the forest. 
We got lots of unique fill types. And with this map being available for console, right, this may be the first time we've seen some of these fill types available for console players. I don't uh, keep a close record on that, but I do feel that that may be a possibility. Yeah, let me know your all's thoughts down in the comments below. Again, for Rogue River Valley, find this map or the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And until next time, happy farming.